we are living in a digital world. Modern communication between people occurs digitally. Texts, tweets, pictures, posts are all forms of modern digital communication. Digital technology offers people many possibilities to contact with others. A digital self in today's world can be valuable and convenient. By interacting with digital technology, we create digital data. Personal digital data contains information about yourself. It may not seem like a big deal, but unbeknownst to you, your personal data is being exploited for value. Having personal information being used by somebody else is not ideal and could create serious problems for the future of the digital age. Devices that connect to the internet are called Internet of Things. What are Internet of Things? Well, here's Alistair Allen to explain. The era where privacy can no longer be assumed, where it's not a social norm, will not long survive the coming of the Internet of Things. Because our devices are already becoming smarter. They're becoming network connected. Our computing is diffusing out into our environment. Whether we know it or not, we leave a trail of data behind us as we move through the world. A data exhaust, shreds of our digital identity, if you will. And in 10 years' time, our world will be full of sensors. And they'll be embedded in everyday objects, things that today might surprise us. But for now, for today, those sensors are embedded in our cell phones, in our smartwatches, in our fitness trackers. And they don't just talk to us. Depending on how you use the internet through one of these devices depends on how your data is collected. There are various types of digital data online. Content data refers to content available in web documents like pictures, videos, audio files, text. Structured data is data on linkage information by analyzing how different web documents are linked together. Usage data is transaction data of a specific user that are found in web server logs controlled by internet service providers, which are the companies who offer a variety of deals for internet access. Say you are on Facebook and you post a picture of your dog. How data mining works is analytic software combs over personal data to find patterns that can be used to segment users to analyze. What was originally intended to be an innocent picture of your dog has now placed you to be analyzed. Web gathering data includes information collected from forms, transactions, and clickstream records. Clickstream data can be used to track paths between users and different hyperlinks on the web. Data firms take advantage of available data and use cookies to find out how fast your internet is, the type of software, IP addresses, you name it. You might be thinking, okay, I post my stuff online, but where does my data go? Well, data from these offline online touch points can also be mixed with a third-party demographic database. Then it's analyzed at a data warehouse that looks something like this. Empty warehouses like these are where data of millions of individual people is stored. A vast amount of data like this can prove to be very valuable. In fact, over half of Fortune's top 1,000 companies planned on using data mining technologies as early as in 2001 to help determine their marketing strategy. So with the accumulation of data comes with the accumulation of value. There are many scenarios where recently data mining is being understood as a controversial invasion of privacy. Facebook has detailed personal data of all its 1 billion users. Those people already give Facebook their age, employer, relationship status, likes, locations willingly. With all this useful data, Facebook's lax data policies has allowed the detailed personal information of 87 million Facebook users to be analyzed by 
Cambridge Analytica, a political data firm. The personal details of those profiles were analyzed for political means. Facebook defends their practice as a way to strengthen security and to target advertise. Even that has led Facebook to applications like Facebook Pixel. Facebook Pixel is invisible code that is placed on other websites so that that site and Facebook can track your user activity. Facebook and other websites are using these cookies to track users and non-users on other sites. Ethical and legal arguments for the right to privacy are complicated because of the nature of data mining. The identity of the user is often kept secret or not collected to argue that the data mining does not infringe on personal privacy. However, data itself was still collected which could infringe on categorical privacy. Categorical privacy is privacy which would allow group characteristics that are applied as if they were individual characteristics to be recognized as personal data. Facebook claims that they always get consent prior to collecting personal data, but European regulators would disagree. In 2012, Facebook ceased using its facial recognition technology in Europe for their tagging feature because they are collecting biometric facial data without consent. What can be done to protect your personal data? Can anything be done? Regulatory rulings, like with Facebook and the EU, can lead to a reduction of data mining practices. In regards to privacy and security risks, service providers are required to carry inspections through a third party, but the pace of technology outpaces the regulations. Japanese service providers use a privacy mark as a seal of approval that a website can be trusted. In the United Kingdom, a program called Metadata is used in banking to allow the management of personal information by the user. The user can monitor and know what exact personal information is being collected. The Dutch Telecommunications Act of 1998 made it so telecom providers are obligated to erase or make anonymous all traffic data relating to subscribers. The World Wide Web will only get larger with more people and more data to mine. The importance to understand data mining and to mitigate data mining where it can be useful but not infringe on personal data privacy is extremely important.